welcome to how to add a WP recipe maker recipe. Now if you're doing a food blog you've probably noticed that the posts that we've created so far are basically Latin placeholder text. So what makes a post a recipe? Sure we could use the WordPress tools to build up a recipe using paragraphs and dot points to represent the ingredients and the methods and the steps but there's actually a better way to do this using the totally free WP recipe maker plugin. The advantages of using this plugin is that once you enter all the recipe info into the plugin, you get immediate support for printing of recipes. Yeah, people still do that, I know. It fully populates all of the metadata that Google reads, making your recipes more visible from an SEO perspective. It facilitates users reviewing your recipe through a star system that they can access through the comment area. It talks you through all the things that you might need in your recipe that maybe you haven't thought of, like preparation time, total time, cooking time, yield. And also, we have a built-in style so that it works perfectly with your theme. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the plugin. And we do this by clicking on Plugins, Add New, putting WP Recipe Maker in as a keyword and clicking Enter. Clicking Install Now on the WP Recipe Maker plugin and activating the plugin. Now that the plugin is installed, we need to set it up so it uses the Lazy Cat Themes template. We do this by clicking on WP Recipe Maker Settings. As you can see, there is a Lazy Cat template built in. And you can select this by going to Default Recipe Template, selecting Lazy Cat Template, and clicking Save Changes. Now we're going to go and take our chocolate orange pot and add a recipe area that contains the actual instructions required to make the chocolate orange pot. We start this by clicking on posts and then editing the chocolate pot recipe, scrolling down to where we want to put the instructions and clicking the WP Recipe Maker button. At this point we'll be given a window. The image that we're going to use for this recipe will be the featured image that we use for the recipe. A lot of you will be thinking later on, where does this picture show? The picture doesn't actually show next to the recipe. This picture is still useful because when people search for your recipe with Google search, this is the small picture that will come up next to your recipe when your blog gets above a certain size, which increases the number of people that are likely to click on your recipe and view it from Google search results. We also put in the name. We put in a summary. I highly recommend entering all of these fields on the first page. Because if you don't have a minimum number of fields, and it's a little bit complicated and it changes from time to time, Google won't recognize this as a recipe, and you'll be limited in how well it will show up in SEO. So I would highly recommend entering all of the fields except for the last two, which is course and cuisine, which you may not want to enter because you're really doing that with the tags and the category stuff that we discussed earlier. So we enter all of the fields, and then we go to ingredients and instructions. And obviously I'm just entering some dummy fields, but in a normal case, you would enter all of the ingredients and all of the instructions that you would normally have in a recipe. And we click insert. Now we're going to preview the changes of our post just to see what we've created. And there we have it, a recipe fully formatted correctly for our theme with support for printing and optimized entirely for SEO. In the next lesson, we're going to discuss how to change the pin settings on the home page and the other pages that include pins. <laughs>